This is the Channel 4 Salon, staffed by a team of industry professionals and equipped with state-of-the-art cutting stations, backwashes and beauty spa. Every year in Britain, over 300 million visits are made to salons and spas, giving the hair and beauty industry an annual turnover of £4.1 billion. But from tomorrow at 10 a.m., the doors will open and you will be able to book appointments for anything from a simple trim to a brand new image. From leg waxing and facials to bikini wax and Botox, all completely free. But why open the salon? Just what is the industry all about? Industry in five words, that's a tough one. I don't care what they say. Exciting. Passionate. Demanding. Challenging. One more. Sexy. Every year, the average person in Britain spends over £300 on haircuts and beauty products. Hairdressing is not just about perms and blue rinses. It's glamorous, exciting and cool. Hairstylists these days have the power to change the way we look and feel. You can really, truly change people's lives with a haircut. And to me, that is what it's all about. If we can cut somebody's hair or style somebody's hair, there's nothing, there's no better feeling than seeing somebody feeling good about themselves. As a result of this influence, some have become demigods, exalted to the level of celebrity. Hairdressers now are celebrities in their own rights. They appear on chat shows, GMTV, this morning, you name it, they're on it. People are interested in what hairdressers have to say, what they're doing. They're featured in the national press, the women's consumer glosses. Everywhere you turn, hairdressers are famous now. You know, hairdressing is, you know, something a little bit like if you're a supermodel or a photographer, or it's an incredible uh, thing that's going to take you into situations that you never dreamt that you ever would. The average hairdresser earns £300 a week, but making it as a celebrity hairdresser can bring in as much as £14,000 a week. Hairdressing is a very profitable career for those that want to do it and for those that want to do it well. You only have to come to the British Hairdressing Awards to see the wealth and the money and the success in the room. They're all driving fantastic cars, wearing fantastic clothes, have the best kit available. There is money in hairdressing if you want to do it and do it properly. What is now a fully working, state-of-the-art hair and beauty salon began life three months ago as a derelict South London print works. As the work got underway, the search for the salon staff began. From the tons of application forms received, a few hundred went through to the first round interviews. But to, um, you know, wake up, maybe meditate, do a bit of yoga, then start work about 11ish. Sometimes I like to blabber on about EastEnders and whatnot, and I just sort of sit there and listen. I like meeting different people, especially wise people as well. I've got a good sense of wisdom. It's only a comb I've got, not a bloody wand, isn't it? You know, there you go. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh. Up until last year, excuse me. The production team shortlisted 100 people to go through to the second round. To advise with decisions, leading experts in the world of hairdressing came on board as consultants. Winner of British Hairdressers of the Year 2002 is Beverly Cabella. First up is Beverly Cabella. Hailed by celebrities and colleagues alike as a goddess with scissors, Beverly is an icon. She's the only woman in hairdressing history to win the coveted British Hairdresser of the Year Award, not once, but twice in a row. The hairdressing industry is, a, is an amazing career. Uh, it's such a creative industry, it's glamorous. It's, there's so many different avenues you can take from being within the salon, session hairdressing, working with celebrities, going on fashion shoots and fashion shows, there's hair shows, there's traveling, there's everything. On a personal level, hairdressing really is my life. Um, that's, that's all I've done since the age of 13. Beverly's husband, Anestis, is also her business partner. Together, they are a major force in the hairdressing industry. Anestis will also be casting a critical eye over the potential salon staff. I'm so looking forward to being in charge on this um, because I think it's important to be able to pick a really good cross-section of people so that you're going to get a few fireworks going on, which happens in every salon. But I really want to judge them, one, on their personalities, and two, how much they really have a passion for the industry. Joining Beverly and Anestis is Anthony Muscolo, creative director of Tony and Guy. The hairdressing industry for me is, you know, is, is the best industry you can be in. Anthony has been voted British Hairdresser of the Year three times. 
his revolutionary haircuts and cutting-edge photography have kept him at the forefront of the hairdressing industry for the last 25 years. With 100 high street salons in the UK and 300 more worldwide, Anthony is at the creative helm of a multi-million pound hairdressing franchise. I started very, very young, you know, because my father was in it, and the, the perception of it from the outside is, you know, we just cut people's hair. But it's really, really quite uh, more detailed than that. There's such a strong education in this industry because what you do today is old tomorrow. You know, we're not fashion creators, but we're hair creators. So you're very much part of the whole fashion industry. The manager's job is the first position to be decided. Finding the right person is vital to the success of the salon. Cut down from the first round interviews to a short list of seven, the potential managers now face a formidable panel. Joining Beverly, Anthony and Anestis is the Salon series editor, Shirley Jones, and the commissioning editor for Channel 4, Ben Frau. What do you feel are the essential qualities of a manager? I've been in management for over 20 years, and management is my forte. I think you've got to be um, a team player. Been around the block a bit, uh, run my own salon for 25 years. It's a great, great opportunity to, to actually you know, give the industry a huge, refreshing insight into like this is, this is great and it would be great to be part of that. My strengths are I'm a born leader. You don't have to jump in there, the barking mad manager route. If you've got the right people in there, it could come across as being really professional and, and quite a, a good thing for the industry. What things will you do in that salon to motivate your staff? Um, I like the atmosphere to be upbeat, buzzy, and like a clubby type atmosphere. And how important is it to you to be liked? Very important. Probably the most important thing in my life. Do you need to be liked? You're never liked as a manager. What, what would be the worst scenario where you would have to dismiss somebody? Being rude or swearing at a client. To me, that would be unacceptable. Well, the obvious ones would be drugs. Negligence. Disloyalty, um, bitchiness, things like that. Drugs, I guess. If you're going to do that, do it at your own time. <laughs> Drug abuse, alcohol abuse, um, fighting in the salon. What's your biggest fear of what could happen? You're probably walking down the road and somebody goes, arsehole, or, or you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> what do you think are your weaknesses? I'm probably too upfront because clearly I wear my heart on my sleeve and what's on my lung is on my tongue. Would you uh, let your staff have relationships with one another? I don't think you can not encourage it. If two people fall in love or they want to shag, then that's kind of, they will do that whatever you, whatever you do, as long as it doesn't affect their job, the way they work and everything else. Are you tough? My biggest rule is leave your problems at home. I do not want to see you fucking crying over in the corner over your boyfriend or your sick mother or your... That's personal. I do not care if your mum's been crushed by a train. It's go home. <laughs> Are you tough? Yeah. I would say I was tough. How short is your fuse? Um... <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, do you really want me to answer that? <laughs> a manager in a top-level salon can earn over £100,000 a year. It is a position of esteem and power. To really test their authority, each manager is asked to role-play a scene with a stroppy member of staff. The problem is that she thinks everyone else in the salon is rubbish. She doesn't respond to criticism because she knows better than anyone else. Tell me, what's the problem? Well, I don't have a problem. I feel that you're not really being, you know, that, that, that enthusiastic towards them. What do you mean, that like, enthusiastic? Well, they feel a little bit isolated from you. What? Isolated? Yeah, they feel that you're sort of, you're, you're often doing your own thing. People have been bitching about me behind my back. I've had one time. You know, because I'm pretty upfront with people, on, and if they don't on. come and say it to me... But what you're saying is the other stylists have got a problem with you. Is that what you're saying to me? I'm not saying that. Someone else has obviously said it. I've not said anything. You seem to think you're better than everyone else in the salon. Well, unfortunately, I can't have that attitude in the salon. What about if we did a bit of a seminar or a bit of a soiree right, evening right. so that they could see what you do? Right. If you can't get the guys on your side, then your job is on the line. You know, your role is very important and it's important to us and it's important yeah. to your clients. Yeah, it's but important to me as well. You, Listen, guys, all right, all right, I know what you're saying. You shouldn't be kind of gossiping around the salon. Oh, no, it's we not gossip, it's direct. You're a really good stylist and I think I you've got a lot of potential. Thank you. 
think you're a really good stylist and I think you've got lots of potential. Let's work on the team and bring them up to your level. Now, I'm the boss and you're just a stylist, so go home, sweetheart. End of show. Goodbye. With the interviews over, the panel discussed the contenders. Jacqueline yeah, was Jacqueline very, was very strong. She yeah. was good. I really liked her in the confrontational situation. Yeah, she was she brilliant. Really she was brilliant. I mean, you know, th that was a good manager. I personally don't know whether she, she was enough to keep me interested in watching. I don't think I'd tune in to watch her. They have to take control. Yeah. It is their salon. Yeah. They have to run Tell it like a business. That. This is what worried me about Clive. Clive did not take control at all. He's, he's a lovely guy and he's, he's probably the fairest man on this earth. But they will walk all over him. Yeah. It worries me that it, it, he yes. regards it as a TV programme instead of approaching it as a business. Real. It's a real business. It has to have mm. authority, otherwise it falls at the first fence. Well, but I think AD is, uh, is the future of hairdressing. Yeah. Out of all the people yeah. I saw today, he, he certainly would he be. He really is passionate He's certainly about passionate about it, yeah. and he, he's good. I think, yeah, I you think know. he represents the industry well, because it is about individuality yeah. and creativity yeah. and passion. Yeah. I think Paul, Paul is very like right, Terry. I think he's a young version yeah. of Terry. Yeah. I think that's what Paul is. He's yeah. got the same qualities. He's got that flirtatious look. He's got that kind of twinkle in his eye. Yet he's also obviously a good manager. Is he strong enough to know. run this as a serious operation? He's the strongest we've strong seen. And I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know Paul very well, but I know Terry. Uh, some of the things he came, that came across, he's got some very good morals, actually. Yeah. You know, basically Basically, you're looking at Terry, you're looking at Paul, and you're looking at AD. You know, AD's got the great quality of right, bomb right there in front of everybody. Yeah. But the others have got what we want from a manager, you know, or some of what we want from a manager. After much deliberation, the panel finally made a decision. I'm happy with that. I think we had seven great people, yeah. but I think they're the one. Everyone in you agree? agreement? Yeah. Everybody yes. agrees? I think that'd be really good. Yeah. I look forward to seeing them. Yeah, it'd be brilliant. Coming up in part two, the shortlisted stylists are put to the test and the manager of the salon is revealed. If people don't meet his expe expectations, sloppy work, poor standards, I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't have that, but he will not tolerate that. Tomorrow, Channel 4 open their high-class hair and beauty salon. For five days a week, you can book appointments for haircuts, colouring, waxing, massage, nails and many other treatments. Every business needs a boss and in a hair and beauty salon the main man is the manager. Pick from a short list of seven experienced professionals. That position has now been filled. My name is Paul Merritt and I'm the manager of the salon. I started hairdressing 15 years ago and within that time I've kind of done various shows, seminars. I was on the Fame team for the Fellowship, which is quite a kind of prestigious thing to do. I've won Next Generation Award. I've won the Image of the Year Award. I've done various front covers for different magazines as well. At the moment, I'm working with Nicky Clark, and I'm just setting up the Manchester Salon. Previous to that, I've sort of travelled the world, really. I'm from Mexico, Taiwan, Japan. Uh, done all sorts of jobs. Miss Mexico's hair, uh, when we was in Mexico. Sultan of Brunei's daughters for a photo shoot. They just fly you out, you do your job, and away you go. Now I'm in Manchester and I get to cut people's hair on Coronation Street and various football teams. My workmates would probably say a bit of a character. He's a nice guy, but he's a bit of an aging rock star. He's excellent as a boss and he's very good with the clients, a very much a charmer with the ladies. I've got my own unique style of leadership, which is kind of get them on my side. Uh, but if someone pisses me off, I'm, I'm quite a firm kind of guy. If people don't meet his expectations, sloppy work, poor standards, I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't have that, but he will not tolerate that, whether it's the salon or any salon, and he'll say, and he will be the first to say, he won't hold back. In that salon, anyone crosses the line, anyone crosses the line, I, I'll have to sack them. I'm 35 years old, still a bit of a lad, um, I love my gadgets, I um, love my fast cars, I like my apartment, live in always live in nice apartments. Night, Big TV, Sky Electrics, 
you know, just, just kind of a bit of a boy, really. If you come into the salon and get your hair cut with me, you've got an hour of my time. My job is to make you look the best you can possibly look. Sexy, beautiful, whatever it takes. I'm going into the salon to do my job, and for me, every day has got to be exciting. I'm going in there to do my job, do it well, and make it a bit interesting. This is going to be good to watch. With the manager now in place, our consultants turned their attention to the stylists, juniors and receptionist. All were set practical tests and by the end, a hundred hopefuls had passed through the doors. Under the watchful eyes of Beverly and Anthony, the first receptionist went into action. It was her job to organise the hair models and pair each stylist with a junior. Sandra immediately impressed Beverly and Anthony with her professional approach. I think she was very good. Very. I, I mean, she was pretty scary. I got to be honest. She's right in there, but she smiled straight away. Yeah. She very did. strong. Yeah. Smiled, and she was. She knew. She knew her stuff. She knew where everyone should go. Organised everyone with with ease. I think the reception is the nucleus of any salon, and if if things go wrong there, it goes wrong everywhere. So, I think she. I think she was great. All the potential stylists are trained industry professionals. They were scrutinised and tested as they would have been for any job interview. We're looking for the way that you work as a stylist and as a junior. She is quite a girl. Yes. Okay. So got nice her, breasts. Yeah, yes. which is great. But what I'm saying is we're making her, her head almost look smaller than her breasts. So you've got some laminates gel, nice to sleep, really fresh looking, really sort of chic. While Beverly checked the quality of the work, Anthony and Anestis were in reception as another batch of stylists arrived. Straight in front of you if you want to put your bags in there. As group after group came through the door, it got loud, it got hectic, and it got hot. And to make matters worse, Anthony was yet to be impressed. Some of them are cutting well. I mean, uh, they're finishing, you know. And uh, it could be nerves, but I don't think so. You either know how to do it or you don't. Anestis, meanwhile, was pleased by the work of Brazilian Ricardo. Wonderful. Good job. Excellent. After narrowly missing the manager's job, Aidy was asked back to try out as a stylist. What do you think of uh, Aidy? I think he definitely has a passion. I mean, he's really into it. Yeah. He cares about what he does. The way he goes about doing things is very unorthodox, but there's nothing wrong with that. Apart from Aidy, Anthony also saw potential in the work of other stylists, such as Sonia. Funky. Can you just have a look? It's very nice. Blast it. Good job. Well done. Uh, it was a bit of a rush at the end, but we got there in the end. <laughs> I was a bit apprehensive at first coming in because obviously you don't know what to expect. Yeah, the first ten minutes, it's like... Whether my client is big and fat and ugly, whatever she can be, I can always make it work for them. Why do we always get the long, curly haired mum and always the short straw? It went really well. I'm very happy with what I did. I'm OK. I mean, I cut my finger. All of a sudden, I just saw blood on the floor and I was like... Aah! I think every, everything went quite, quite smoothly, no problems, and you know, I was quite happy with the result as well. Terry Hoy. After the rigorous practical assessment, salon manager Paul met those shortlisted by Beverly, Anthony, and Anestis for a one to one chat. So, who impressed enough to make it into the salon? Hi, my name is Ricardo, I'm from Brazil, and I'm going to be a stylist in the salon. I've been hairdressing for about three years now, just over. Quite perfectionist. Whatever you think. Well, I think the fringe. You think the fringe? I think the fringe. Oh, okay. If a client was to go to Ricardo in the salon, he's just an absolute perfectionist. They'll go for a nice haircut, but they'd probably enjoy the drama, the outrageousness, because you've never seen anything like it before in your life, basically. I've been in London now for over 12 years. I just love my freedom. I just love the shopping. I've, I will always like shopping. It's just part of me. From Bond Street to charity shops. I've got all this silk and all the uh, big 
bit of dresses and high heels, coats, hot pants, dresses here, belts, t-shirts, got jewellery here, leggings. It makes me feel good. It's just bang, bang, bang. My Saturn and Sunday, I just go for it. I had a few friends and they, they tried to convince me, why don't you dress up in drag one day? I said, oh, that might be fun. So I just, um, just went and bought myself a dress, bought myself um, a wig, shoes, and off I went. But I'm really looking forward to working in the salon, you know, and just to get there and just entertain people, have a laugh with my work colleagues. I don't want to stress, I'm going to have a good time. My name is Sonia Riley, I'm 29 years old and I'm a hairstylist in the salon. I'm originally from Ashbourne in Derbyshire, which is the Peak District. Um, I started hairdressing about 11 years ago. I won uh, Midlands Hairdresser of the Year. I started my own business and Mum and Dad kindly offered to convert the garage into a hairdressing salon. And then I used to get out in my little car around the lanes, going to clients' houses. Well, one time I went to this lady's house and uh, she told me, that I could stay for dinner. And I was in snakeskin trousers and a leather top. We went into this really posh room and uh, the room was full of vicars. <laughs> I moved to London about a year and a half ago and I went into a big salon. I like creating different styles and, and making people look really good. I've cut uh, Dev from Coronation Street. He was good fun, down to earth. My work makes them think I'm really happy, a good laugh. Good to get on with, hard working. Yeah, she's lively, she makes the clients very happy. Also, she's uh, very friendly with everybody. Now I'm in London, of course. Every time I come over to see the family, Dad's sat in the chair with a cape on and the clippers yeah. out, and now I get roped into doing the whole family's hair. If you come into the salon and get me to cut your hair, you'll get entertainment, um, a damn good haircut. <laughs> uh, I'll make you feel very relaxed and comfortable, and send you out looking a million dollars. The things that annoy me or irritate me about hairdressing is when you're cutting someone's hair, you've done a consultation and you just start cutting the good they're doing this. I'm like, will you leave your hair alone, please? And I will, when a client is in my chair, I'm the governor. My name's Aidy Phelan and I'm a stylist in a salon. I got into hairdressing five years ago. Before I was hairdressing, I was painting and decorating, believe it or not. And uh, then I went in for the British Hairdressing Awards in 2000 and won Men's British Hairdress of the Year, which was a great, it was a great feeling to do that. And then 2002 Image of the Year for the, uh, for the Beckham uh, cover, the GQ cover. This goes to Mr. Character himself, Aidan Phelan. Yeah. And I do everything from builders, to glamour models, to hookers, to businessmen, to f entertainers, to footballers, to celebrities. I mean, I get it all. I mean, like, sort of like doing Liza Minnelli. I mean, she's just an amazing, eccentric, flamboyant, wonderful woman. Hold it down, boy. Your head's getting blurred. Every single Monday, I go to my pie and mash up. I love it. I know you can't stop thinking of her. You know, going there is full of people with like no teeth and glasses this big. By all means you can vibe with this girl. I just love going in there and eating my pie mash, reading my paper. Don't bug yourself, that's all. Don't bug yourself. I love playing pool. I just go out to have a bit of fun. All the things that geezers do. If someone comes into the salon, what they're going to get from me is they're going to get something fresh, they're going to get something cool. I'm not saying I'm going to give every single client a mad haircut, but I'm certainly going to be doing my style of hairdressing. I make sure, no matter what problems I've got on my plate or problems at work, I give them an hour of my time. And for that hour, make them feel like a VIP. That's what it's all about. It's about making that person leave that shot and them giving it. I really, really enjoyed that. I'm just going to be myself and that's my objective, is to be myself and enjoy it. And if people don't like the energy that I give back, well, tough, not interested. If they do, fantastic. I'm gonna go out of my way to be horrible. I'm just gonna go out of the way to be me. End of fucking story. The salon isn't only a hairdressing experience. 
It also has a beauty spa with jacuzzi and sauna. In part three, the beauty therapists who hope to work there face a testing time. Why didn't you do one coat and then one coat? Why didn't you put some cream on there? I'd like you to change that for me if you don't mind. Adi, Ricardo and Sonia have been employed as stylists in the salon. But the salon is not just about the haircuts, there's also a beauty spa. Over the next eight weeks, you'll be able to book appointments for anything from a facial to a bikini wax, semi-permanent makeup to a massage. To carry out these treatments, two beauty therapists will be needed. Shavata Singh was asked to test the potential beauty therapists. She's a highly respected figure in the industry, regularly mentioned in the pages of Tatler and Vogue as a leading beauty therapist. Her celebrity clientele include Heather McCartney and Elle McPherson. I've been a beauty therapist for 15 years. Very hard work, but I love it. Before, the beauty industry was a bit quiet and slow because it, it was a taboo subject, but now you get women coming in regularly for manicures, regularly for pedicures, waxing. A successful therapist that will make it into the salon will have to be intelligent, um, perfectionist. I really want to get out of that cliche of therapist being known as thick and dumb. We're not thick, we're not dumb. And it wasn't the last resort because we didn't do well at school. Shivata tested a short list of 12 beauty therapists. Each had to showcase their technique and professionalism by performing four treatments. A massage, a facial, a leg wax, and a nail treatment. Under Shivata's critical eye, no mistake went unnoticed. Why didn't you do one coat and then one coat and then go back to two? Why didn't you put some cream on there? I'd like you to change that for me, if you don't mind, just for hygiene reasons. Do you want to move that on a bit further up to you? Thank you. Suzanne, how long have you been a beauty therapist? Six years. Six years? Mm -hmm. Suzanne, um, very thorough, methodical, organised, um, mature. How long did you say you've been doing beauty therapy for? Five and a half years. The twins? Really sweet, cute. Um, the waxing was a little poor, um, but they came in their element when it came to their facials. They were just, they loved doing it, you could see. Pressure points on the face. Sonia, beautiful girl, really attractive, but she just wasn't an all rounder. I've actually got my own salon. You have? Yes. So how will your salon cope without you being there? Sabrina. Great. I don't think there's anything else I can say about her. Great personality, intelligent, in control. At the end of the session, Shavata deliberated about who to put through to the final interview. As with the stylists, Paul got the chance to meet those shortlisted by Shivata. Areas that I'm passionate about. I love treating skin. I've been told to be nervous of you. Uh, you're, kind of, you're, you're the big bad boss. I mean, you should try a synchronised massage. That is. That is so the one. Yeah, yeah, that is the one. That's good. We're talking friction. Hang on a minute. The two beauty therapists hired for the salon are Sabrina and Suzanne. Originally from Clay in County Kildare, um, and I came over to England when I was 17, so I've been here for 13 years. I went to college for two years studying beauty therapy, and after that, I opened up the salon, which I've had for six years now. Absolutely love it, I've worked really, really hard. The clients are all excellent, it's like a big kind of happy family, really, in that salon. When we go home, you know, for a weekend and you're having a conversation, it'll be racing, or you're definitely going to have a bet. You know, I always have a look and see what's happening and then I'll go and have a couple of bets on Saturday. When I'm in the salon, hopefully I'll bring a bit of laughter, a few giggles and a few smiles. The things that irritate me are um, people worried about time. What's 10 minutes? What's, you know, half an hour? At the end of the day, 
God made time, he made plenty of it. You know, as long as you're not like half a day late. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the new year then, okay? Thanks a million. At the end of the day, I don't think I'm cool. Um, I'm a country bumpkin. I've been in the beauty industry and nail industry for nine years, since I left college really. So I've covered everything to do with beauty. I have my own nail business and it, I run it in a concession in a hairdressing salon. I've ended up working especially in nails because it's interesting, it's instant, the results are instant so as soon as you apply the product and you've sculpted the nail or applied the nail you have a result straight away. Saf's been doing my nails for about five years now and she knows what I like, she knows the shape I like and the quality is very very good. She brilliant at a job, fantastic nails, look at mine, um, pretty cool girl. I'm actually a very homely girl, I'll be honest with you, even though I do like the idea of going out, partying and things like that, I do enjoy my home, I enjoy my family, I'm very close to my family, whether not just my immediate family, which is my mom and my dad and my brother, but my aunties, my uncles, my cousins, I've got a relationship with all of them, even to the youngest, you know. Um, Living at home is absolutely fantastic, do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, what more can you want with your mum and dad around, yeah? I'm very close to her, that's why she's still at home. I miss my dad's cooking, I my mum washing for me. Uh, but I will, um, I will miss, I will miss them. With construction of the salon complete, the finishing touches were applied. After three months of hard work, it has been transformed from an old print works into a state-of-the-art hair and beauty salon. On the other side of town, the team needed to staff the salon get together for a publicity photo shoot. It's the first opportunity they have to meet the people they will be working with for the next two months. Joining Paul, Aidy, Ricardo, Sonia, Sabrina and Suzanne are the final three staff. A junior, a colourist and a receptionist. The youngest member of the team at 18, Oliver joins the salon as a junior in the beauty spa. I look sexy. <laughs> I've been at London College of Beauty Therapy since August. Um, it's a really good laugh. It basically entails um, manicures, pedicures, facials. I do waxing, that includes bikini. If someone comes in, and they need a bikini wax done, and I'm available, I'll say, you know, do you want me to do it for you? It's then up to them if they say, yeah, I'll do it, or no, I'll do it. I've never met a male beauty therapist. That's what sort of prompted me to do it. My mum was like, treatments are a load of rubbish, you know, they're just a waste of money, you don't get anything from them. Got her feet out, did her pedicure, and afterwards she was so pleased. She was like, oh, they look really nice, and she's looking at them, and now she's I've got her, can I have a facial, can I have a massage? I'm like, yeah, okay. I've been proud of him all the way through his career and his schooling, but this is something that I would never have believed he would have been doing. He's very friendly, so he would work well with people coming into the salon, as well as the people within the salon, the workers. I think I would definitely go in there and just be myself and enjoy it. I'm not going to do anything more than that. <laughs> Hiya. Next is Melanie. She will assist the stylists and colour hair. My mum was a hairdresser, so I've always been around her doing hairdressing and I've always not been interested in school, just getting my hands on and doing people's hair and makeup and all that sort of stuff. I'm still living at home with my mum, my dad and my brother James. My dad is 110% behind me, he thinks it's a brilliant opportunity. I told her to uh, marry the first millionaire she meets. My mother's not so sure because we're so close. As soon as you know, she's home from work, it's the house is just alive, so that I will miss. I spend a lot of time with the girls, so we all go out to go clubbing. Ta-da! I go out to uh, have a good dance. I also go out to have a little chat with the opposite sex. 
London is massive in hairdressing, so I want to experience all that. I think my biggest dream is to open my own salon and win loads of awards. I'd really like to do Will Young's highlights. Um, and I wouldn't mind doing Duncan from Blue's highlights as well because they've got that kind of floppy hair which always looks nice highlighted. Um, and then he, like a nice little blow dry on Kylie or something, that would be quite cool. Whatever, anyone. The reception area is the nucleus of any salon. To meet, greet and keep the customers happy is Sandra. Currently I'm a head receptionist for Saks Home and Beauty in Covent Garden. Being a head receptionist is like providing good customer service, making sure the customer knows what's going to happen, how they are, making sure they're comfortable and settled. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm a good laugh. I love having a good time. I feel gutted that she's leaving. Um, I mean, hopefully it won't be for too long, so, but I know she'll be really successful in the salon. My family, my family, they're all mad. The mad bunch of Sicilians, they are. My parents came over from Sicily about 38 years ago. Sandra is a fluffy girl, you know, good looking, full of spirit, always smiling, always happy, she never got problems. People can tell I'm very Italian, like not just because of my looks or whatever, but because of my fiery temper and my passion. Sandra's got many emotions, I mean, and she's like, could be the life and soul of the party, but if you catch her at the wrong moment, she snaps, and I would not want to be someone trying to chat her up when she's in a bad mood. Um, I do like a good laugh, and I could be quite loud as well, but I like to be entertaining. I'm the type of person I can't sit still. And, you know, if I get bored quite easily, I've got to prance around or do something stupid or have a laugh. I love socialising. Um, I love having friends around, entertaining. Where I currently work at the moment, people look at me a bit like a mother figure. I'm always there to pick people up or people can talk to me about anything. So I'm, I've got a good ear and a big heart. With the lineup of staff needed to work for the next two months complete, the salon is ready for business. Good, OK, here we go. Coming up in part four, the staff settle into their new place of work and details of how you can be a salon customer. The salon is now open for business. If you book an appointment, you'll get top quality professional service, all captured on 20 cameras and 30 microphones. There are five cutting stations, a spa area and treatment rooms. There is even a sauna. Earlier this week, Paul revealed the salon to his staff so they can get used to their new working environment. I've got these in my room. Comes the three little virgins. <laughs> <laughs> angels, we are. Oh, angels, sorry. Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh, look, my crystal ball, I can tell your fortune. I've got crystal balls. <laughs> Bet you have. OK, where's my book gone? The salon sinks come complete with vibrating massage chairs. Adi and Ricardo test them out. What's it like? Yeah, and things have given us to work out what, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Over the last four days, clients came in for treatments to see how the staff coped in their new salon. <laughs> Sonia's first client is a short back and sides. Oh, there's a dog come to have its hair cut. Are you here for an appointment? Is that your name? Jodie. I'm good at... Bloody hell, don't let me near dogs. <laughs> I'll stick that bugger to the carpet. <laughs> This was air wax when I was waxing somebody's legs. I dropped it in, because you, you have your potty, you see, and you get the wax and you trail yeah. it over to put on the legs. And it was like a long ear. You tried a little whip it. Oh, no. And it was sat there, peed itself, and she went, Rufus. <laughs> and they picked it up, put it outside, couldn't lift the damn thing up. <laughs> get on my hands and knees with scissors. <laughs> Cut it out. Oh, God. You can't really not like Paul. Especially when, when you work. So you like porn? Well, yeah. Do you watch porn when you're when you're in bed with your boyfriend? Yeah. Well, not in bed. You wouldn't watch porn in bed. You wouldn't tuck up in bed. Well, not watch it on the bed, on the couch. Yeah, or on the couch, wherever. Good eyes. 
what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna slice for you. Just lay it all over, chop into it. Sorry, Ricardo, what do you want for lunch? Uh, what, are we Nothing not gonna exotic. go out? No, we're not allowed to. So, um, Sonia and Adi are gonna go out and get lunches now, because everyone's sort of running over and stuff anyway. I want pasta. You want pasta? I want cannelloni. <laughs> and if we can't get cannelloni? Uh, I'm sure you can get cannelloni. If you can't get cannelloni, you get me... Um, uh, any pasta with... Uh, I don't like mushrooms. No, but if um, we can't get your pasta, I mean, we've been realistic here. Ricardo, today, please. <laughs> and that's it, a normal Coke, okay. and that's it. Okay. And actually something, a sweet or a cake or something. Something sweet. And some... Yeah, I like a chocolate cake, or a carrot cake, a passion I'll cake that will do as well. <laughs> Sorry to How is that? No, do you know I like what you it. want for lunch? I like it too. Wasn't it a good job? Sandwiches for the lunch. Well done to me. Thank you. Sorry? <laughs> you see what I mean? What I've done, Anything I've done... It? Sorry. I've done quite, quite small fringe. I didn't go all the way there. Dealers, bars, clubs, food, three o'clock There is also a nail bar in the salon for manicures and pedicures. Yeah. She's cancelled. OK, then. Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Bye. Suzanne? Just so you know, your 11 o'clock's just cancelled. She couldn't get oh, in. I think she's she? Well, she was on the train and she was having problems yeah, getting in. Yeah, bad with the weather. OK, not yeah, to worry. Yeah, so she's cancelled anyway. So, oh. OK, sorry about that, darling. Not only are all treatments free at the salon, but the stylists also offer great tips and advice. Um, I've got, like, a few grey hairs. Not, no, sorry, silver hairs. Got grey hair? Well, cut them out. Got grey hair, darling. There's nothing I can do for you there. <laughs> no, I'm really joking. We call, again, we call it silver hair. My client's got grey hairs. You don't want anyone to know. <laughs> I'm really Come on, carry on. Sorry. Um, so you're full of grey. I want to know, is it better to put, like, put, like a dark colour on all of it? The thing with putting a dark colour on the top over all of it is you're going to then have roots. I mean, you've seen them. I've, I've only literally got a few, but they're, they're definitely there. What I do is, whatever your natural colour is, go one tone darker. And that way, when the roots come through, it doesn't look so apparent. Because what happens is, if you put dark colour on this colour hair, yeah. it's going to look like you're down bald when your roots grow it. You never know who's going to be the next client to come through the salon doors. Tony is an ex-army sergeant major. He's come to see Sabrina for an all-over self-tanning treatment. Hello. Are you Tony? That's correct. How are you today? I'm very well. Good, you're looking forward to your treatment. I can't wait. <laughs> Actually, Oliver and Sabrina will be doing the treatment. Would you prefer, yeah, no, would you prefer him to shower? Would you prefer I'd him? I'd prefer him to shower because he's right. nice and clean, do you right, know what I mean? We'll do that then. If that's OK no, with you. No, that's fine. OK, so and you don't is he need wearing tanga? <laughs> she asked me, does he want a thong? Or a tanga? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Are these bras? <laughs> I don't know, are no. these the men's panties? Oh, no, well, let's have a look. Sorry, everyone, you know, we are. <laughs> thongs, they're thongs. Oh, you can't have one of them on. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want one of these, mate? Oh, that won't hold anything in. Bless him. Men don't have to, though. Men are quite all right. They can just wear their own underwear. You don't have to get them, honestly. That's the pre- Right, he's not taking them off, advice. though, mate, I'm telling you. Are well, they're boss, them, aren't they? They're quite nice. Mm. Don't be long. OK. I should have had a cup of Rosaline, shouldn't I? Like in all top high street salons, our salon guarantees transformations, hot gossip and top hair and beauty tips. But with the added highlight of everyday drama from the staff room and the salon floor. As well as haircuts, colour, style and blow dries, our beauty treatments range from waxing, facials and massages. Experts will also visit the salon once a week to provide specialist treatments such as semi-permanent makeup and Botox.
take this up before I show you the back. I'm going to un 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 unrobe you. We basically kept the length, like we said. Freshened up all these layers through there, put lots of texture through here. Put a nice bit of shape around your face. It's really kept it. It's a freshen up, really. You can do whatever you want, darling. It's your barnet. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, I'll see you in eight weeks. You've got to come back in and get your <laughs> colour done. Uh, make sure I book, uh, you book the consultation with me, though, when you ring up. All right? And I'll do the consultation for you. Will you do the colour, though? No, I'll get someone else to do the colour. Well, then why am I having a consultation with you? Because it's not about application, it's about the ideas. Okay. So I'm not very... I don't do application. Right. I only come so up with the concepts. OK. You'll say, I'd like to book a colour with Aidy, but... And they'll know to book it in with somebody else. You're going to tell my fortune now yeah. as well. Yeah. Get... What's, what's the day got in store for you? You're going to meet a very sexy, tall hairdresser. <laughs> Handsome, re very well educated, very classy. And he's going to fuck your hair up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you at her. See you later. See you later. Thank you. Bye. After exfoliation and skin buffing, Tony's tan is well underway. How long does it take to kick in? Right, basically, aftercare advice. Um, basically, leave it on for a minimum of eight hours. Mm -hmm. um, you could leave it on overnight and you have perfect mm. um, tan. It'll stop working after 12 hours. Mm. How are you today? I'm all right. I'm so... Well, that snow just gone from my head in. What? Snow? Snow. Well, yeah, because I travel the overground as well, don't I? No bra on today? Yeah. I, it's in there somewhere, isn't it? It's quite revealing, ain't you? Who, me? Yeah. No, not too bad. Right. I was coming up to here yesterday. Very nice. Nice bust. Over the next eight weeks, 800 clients will come through the doors. For your chance to be selected for an appointment at the salon, please call 09012 299 299. Or book an appointment online at www.channel4.com forward slash the salon.